Are you tired of hitting poor quality iron shots? Do you want to hit the ball close to the flag? Do you want to lower your scores? And do you, of course, want to get good at golf? Well, in today's simple golf lesson, we're gonna give you some easy golf tips to help you do just that. We're, of course, talking about irons today, and we're talking about how to hit irons a little bit straighter, a little bit longer, and you may hear that quite a lot. Do you want to hit longer, straighter irons? Of course I do, who doesn't? The fact is they actually come in tandem. It works as a marriage between club face and shaft angle. If you're in control of your club face, generally your shaft angle is gonna be correct to impact, and that means you're gonna hit the ball straighter because dynamically we have less what, Bobby? Woo, Bobby, speak up at the back so they can hear you. We have less dynamic loft. So this seven iron becomes a dynamic six iron as opposed to becoming a dynamic eight iron, which is what happens when Bobby plays golf. So today, we're gonna talk about how to do this correctly. So generally what I see a lot of the time when I see people stand up to a seven iron, we have 164.9 yards here today, playing 167 yards. That should just be a nice seven iron for me if I do the dynamics correctly. So what I see a lot of is a ball in the middle of the stands here and a shaft angle straight up towards my belt buckle there. So I see that so often. And generally what we'll see from that is two mismanagements of the golf swing, which cost you distance and of course, accuracy. So if the shaft is straight up towards your sternum here, the first thing I see is no weight transfer, just to move up to the top here. Because generally what I always think is, if you have the handle of the club in the correct position, that's almost your little reminder to have your weight in the correct position as well. So we want to start with our weight on the left side for a right-handed golfer. So many people think, oh, you start 50-50 surely because you want to be in good balance. You want to be able to jump up in the air. We've seen all this before. Actually, you look at some of the best ball strikers in the world. Look at Henrik Stenson. Look at Sergio Garcia. Look at Rory McIlroy, for example. They start with a, just a little bit more, a fraction of their weight or their pressure on their lead side and the handle ever so slightly forward. We don't see this. We don't see a massive forward shaft lean, but we certainly see just a little forward shaft lean. So it's pointing maybe at the belt loop as opposed to the belt buckle. If you have that pressure on your left side, you're almost now like a sprinter in the starting block. So you can then push off that, start to load the club, and where does your weight go from there, Bobby? To your, Bobby, speak up so we can hear right you. Side. It goes to the right side, it goes to your trail side. From here, as we start to move down into impact, that's where things become a little bit more tricky because we need to get a couple of things right to make sure we can return that shaft in the right position. So we need rotation and we need a weight transfer. So from the top of the backswing here, I know that if I just have a weight transfer this way, there's no room for me to get my hands where I want them to. So that's where you'd see that movement. You see the hands go massively forward and you see a shot, which is, um, should we edit it in, Chris? Yeah. We'll put it in. That is Bobby's. So as soon as you start to see that, you see the hips bumping too much to the left-hand side, the handle driving forward, the hosel pr pronounced at the ball, and unfortunately you see the S-H-A-N-K, which we don't like talking about. But as soon as I start to do things more correctly from the top of the back, so you'll see just really how simple this is because we're talking about fine margins, but it's fine margins that you might as well do correctly than do incorrectly because it can give you maybe an extra club in distance and better dispersion, so you're gonna be more accurate. So as I go from the top of the backswing here, I know that if I actually rotate my left hip, so I start to rotate the hip here and have that little bump forwards, there's now space here that there wasn't before. So as I come down into impact, the space for my hands to be. You'll see there, I've actually got forward shaft lean, but not loads of forward shaft lean. So I can then allow the club to release through, and that's gonna then work towards my target. You'll see club face matching what it's doing on the takeaway with my spine angle. So at no point here is that club flipping over and closing this way. That's what you start to see so often when people don't have the correct weight transfer, don't have the correct rotation because the club face is working from open here and then you're timing it closed. So we actually start to see lots of whip in the golf swing there. Now you can be a very good golfer doing this. I've known good golfers do this and be very, very successful. I've also known them go and shoot 65, then 85 in consecutive days because it's very, very difficult to manipulate the golf club time after time after time and get that timing correct. So. If we take that out of the golf swing, 
we'll start to see shots where generally we see a nice straight ball flight, a nice compressed shot and a nice distance towards that flag as well. You can see that ball's flag high, dead center in the middle of the green. And this is what I want to talk to you about now. I want to talk about the turf interaction post impact, because if we start to see that, we know that we're not generally flipping the club over and we have a nice angle of attack into the golf ball. The fact we've got that forward shuffling means that club face isn't rotating too much through impact. It's simply moving around the natural body of the arc and going ever so slightly left. So you'll see my divot there is pointing just left of where the ball's gone because I'm allowing the club to move around my body. That with a square face to the target produces that lovely little fade that you saw there with the seven iron and it allows us to hit straighter and longer shots. Now the key here is what Rory McIlroy famously said when practicing, work on this not until you get it right but until you can't get it wrong. So from here, I know a couple of drills we can do potentially just to help you with this. So I'll move around because Bobby's stationary. <laughs> from here, I know that if I can just load the club up and have a little bit of rotation and then allow that hip to turn and just start to mimic that slight forward shaft lean, I can start to play a little chip shots where the golf ball is allowing me just to work into the ball. And once you've done this drill a couple of times, you can actually start to incorporate a little bit more, then a little bit more, and then a little bit more. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing the drill in kind of slow motion with a shorter swing to make sure I can gauge how I'm feeling with that hip. The key for me here is the left hip. So my imagination here is feeling as though I get to the top and there's someone just pulling my left pocket behind me there. So I'm bumping to the left slightly, but I'm rotating at the same time. So you can see that left knee wants to straighten ever so slightly. That allows the hip to kind of work up a little bit and rotate. That's what gives us the room for the hands. And that's what gives us the room. It actually works really well for your pitching and chipping as well. So if you're working on this time after time and you're just working on those kind of shots, you can see I'm just playing a slight little draw there and we've had the turf interaction that we want. We've hit slightly down on the ball. We've not kind of caught too much turf, but it's just a nice little interaction. And then we can start to go a little bit more. And you can see that essentially once we start to do this, we can really ingrain that forward shuffling. We can ingrain that feeling with the left hip. And from there, we can start to hit full shots again. That's gonna be a carbon copy every single time. And the one thing we're looking for here is that air of consistency. You can see there two balls bang smack in the middle of the green. The dispersion's pretty good. They've gone the same distance. They've even gone the same height. So I know that if I put all those things together, I can be a nice consistent iron player and get good at golf.